Hi, and welcome to this video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to discuss three questions from the topic of ratio and proportion. So what you can do is you can have a look at the slide that has all the three questions, try them out on your own and then have a look at the solutions that will follow. Now, just a spoiler, these questions are slightly more difficult than what would have come across in a normal scenario. So what you can do is you can take around four minutes to solve these three questions. Even if you take five minutes, it's fine, but try to solve these three questions in four minutes and then you can have a look at the solution. So now I will show you the screen with all the questions that are there. You can just solve these questions and then have a look at the solutions. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the i button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. So if you look at the first question, a solution in vessel A contains water and alcohol in the ratio 18 is to 7. Now 5 liters of the solution has been removed from vessel A and replaced with alcohol. And then the percentage of water in vessel A becomes 54%. Find the quantity of solution in vessel A. Now, one way of solving this is by assuming that let's say the solution in vessel A is 25x, 18x is water, 7x is alcohol, 5 liters is removed. So, if 18x contains or 25x basically contains 18x of water, then 5 liters will contain what amount of water? Then you figure out that, okay, it's going to be 3.6 liters. Then you remove 3.6 liters of water, replace it with alcohol and you can do it in that manner. But it's going to be a slightly difficult way of solving this. What I'm going to show you is a shorter way of solving this particular question. So let's say, for example, the vessel A that is present here contains X liters of solution, right? Let's say vessel A contains X liters of solution. Now, just think about it. If vessel A contains X liters of solution, right? And there is water and alcohol in the ratio 18 is to 7. If I remove 5 liters from the solution, what will basically be the proportion of water and alcohol in the resultant solution. It's going to be 18 is to 7 because when I'm removing 5 liters from the solution, I'm indifferent to alcohol and water, right? If alcohol and water is present in the ratio of 18 is to 7 in 100 liters of the solution, if I remove 50 liters, in the remaining 50 liters as well, it's going to be 18 is to 7. So that is basically what we are going for. So let's say initially X liters of solution were present now x minus 5 liters of this solution is present, right? x minus 5 liters of the solution is present. In this particular solution, what is the percentage of, say, water? You can also do it with alcohol. Let us say for the sake of simplicity, we are trying to figure out what is the percentage of water. The percentage of water is 18 parts out of 25 parts. So, 18 by 25 in the form of a percentage will be 18 fours are 72 by 100. So, the first vessel contains 72% of the solution. Now, what is happening is we are removing 5 liters of the solution that we have adjusted for and then we are replacing it with alcohol, which means we are replacing it with pure alcohol. Pure alcohol contains what percentage of water? 0%, it contains only alcohol. So, the thing that we are adding to this particular bit is going to have 0% of alcohol. The resultant percentage or 0% of water rather the resultant percentage of water in vessel A is 54, which means that when I add these two things, it gives me a mixture of 54%. So, by applying the rule of allegation, we will be able to say that 54 and 0, the gap is 54, 54 and 72, the gap is 18, 54 is between 0 and 72, brilliant. So, I need these two to be in the ratio of 54 is to 18 or 3 is to 1. So, the volume of these two solutions should be in the ratio of 3 is to 1. But what is the ratio of their volumes? This was x minus 5 liters and this was basically 5 liters because we are adding 5 liters of alcohol or 5 liters of 0% water to A. So, if 1 corresponds to 5, 3 will correspond to what? 15. If x minus 5 is 15, what is the value of x? 20. So, that is our answer. With a bit of practice, you can do this orally as well. 72%, 0%, 54%, 54, 18, 3, 1, 5, 15, x minus 5, 20. So, you can all do all these things in your head and can solve this question as well. One of the questions that are present in this particular set is also something that is based on this concept. 
So if you haven't done it with this particular method, you can go back and try it out on your own and then have a look at the solution to the third question in this particular video. Now this was a particularly nasty question and uh, if you face this kind of a question at the test, then you have to you have to sort of think about it and you have to understand whether you will be able to solve it or not. What are the things that are going in your favor if you solve it? What are the things that are against you if you get into this question? So all those things you have to consider. Not a very good question to attempt during the test. But if you have an inkling of what needs to be done, it is something that can give you marks with a bit of guesswork. So what I am going to do is, I will not really get into 6x plus 5x plus 4x minus 150 equals 4800 or whatever, find the value of x which I think comes out to be uh, somewhere around uh, 32 or 320 rather, right? And then go back and write it as 320 into 6, 1920, 1600, uh, 1280 and all those things then add it back and do it. So that is our conventional way of doing it. There is no problem with that method. I am sure you will be able to manage it. If you are not able to manage it, do put a comment in the section below and we will get back to you with that solution. Or I am sure someone from the community will help you with the solution. So, do not worry about it at all. What we are going to look at is a slightly uh, easier way of solving this particular question, which again requires you to trust the paper setter and take a leap of it, right. So, in this particular question, if you look at it, what is happening is the final ratio is 6 is to 5 is to 4, right. Now, as was the case with the previous question, if you remove something in the same proportion, right, then only will the ratio remain the same. Right? So, in this case, 6 is to 5 is to 4 is the ratio of A, B and C. Let us say for example, I just take a random number here. I say A has 600 rupees, B has 500 rupees, C has 400 rupees. Let us say I remove 60 rupees from A, 50 rupees from B and 40 rupees from C. So, what I am removing is in the ratio 6 is to 5 is to 4. What is the ratio of the amounts that remain? 540, 450 and 360. Again, if you just adjust it, this will be 94s are 95s are 96s are. So, if the amounts that are being removed are also in the ratio 6 is to 5 is to 4, then the remaining amount will also be in the ratio 6 is to 5 is to 4. That is what we know, right. So, but the amounts that are removed here are 5, 50 and 95, which is 1 is to 10 is to 19. So, it is not in the ratio 6 is to 5 is to 4, right. So, what will happen in this particular case is the ratio will definitely not be 6 is to 5 is to 4. So, if you look at the options, the first option is out because only if the amounts removed are in the same ratio, will the resultant ratio be the same. So, you have to think about it during the test. If you are going to mark a random answer, please do not mark A as your answer. Just looking at the numbers, you can say that A is definitely not the answer. Now, the odds of you getting the answer correct are 1 out of 4. So, 25 percent of improved your odds by a bit and obviously, every mark matters in terms of the CET. Again, let us look at the next scenario. I know that 4950 rupees has been distributed among A, B and C, right. So, the ratio of quantities that have been distributed to A, B and C, the sum of that should divide 4950 or the sum of the individual parts is something that divides 4950 or 4950 is divisible by this sum. In this case, the sum is 5 plus 6 plus 7 that is 18 parts. Can 4950 be divided by 18? It is definitely divisible by 2. And if you look at divisibility by 9, it is also divisible by 9. So, this is something which is okay. The second, the third option rather is 6 is to 7 is to 4. So, you are supposed to divide it into 6 plus 7, 13 plus 4, 17 parts. Can you divide 4950 by 17? Very simple question. 4950, is it divisible by 17? If you simply try to divide it, 17 twos are 34, 155 is left. 17 9s are 153, 20 is left, you cannot divide it by 17. If you cannot divide 4950 into nice integral numbers, you are not going to get the answer as 654. So, option C is also out. Now, your odds are becoming better. D, if you look at it, it is option B, but in reverse. So, 18, yes, it could be divisible. Fifth option, 476. Again, if you look at it, 4 plus 7, 11 plus 6, 17. 4950 is not divisible by 17. So, just by looking at the numbers and looking at the ratios, you have eliminated three options. Now, the probability of you getting the answer right is 50-50 and you have reached a point wherein you can use the options to figure out the answer. So, let us say for example, A, B, C is 6 is to 5 is to 4, right? That is what we are trying to say. Let us say we take this option 5, 6, 7 and again this option 7, 6, 5. We can see that 
B is the one that is constant in both of these options. So, in the first case as well, it was 6 parts out of 18. In the second case as well, it was 6 parts out of 18. 6 parts out of 18 is nothing but 1 third, right? What is 1 third of 4950? 1 third of 4950 will be 3 1s are 3, 3 6s are 18, 3 5s are 0 and 0. So, 1650 should be the middle number, that much I know, right? 1650 should be the middle number. Now, 1650, I have removed 50 out of 1650 because from B's pocket 50 rupees are getting deducted. So, the amount that is left with B is 1600. That is what we are trying to figure out. Now, we do not need to do anything else after this. It is a very simple straightforward calculation that we have here. 1600 is what remains with B. Now, if you look at either C or A, you should get the answer. right? Let us say for example, you look at C, does not matter at all. 5 parts in this case is 1600. If 5 parts is 1600, what is basically 4 parts? It is 4 fifth of 1600 or 4 into 1600 by 5, 4 into 320 that is 1280, right? 1280 is after you have removed 95. So, 1280 plus 95 will be 1280 plus 100, let us say. 1300 plus 100, it will be around 1400. I do not even need to calculate the exact value. What I need to find out is whether it is going to be less than 1650 or not. It is definitely less than 1650. And you can again do some approximations here. There is no need to calculate the exact value. My question is, is C less than B or greater than B? Because if C is less than B, then B cannot be my answer. If C is greater than B, then D cannot be my answer. C I know is definitely less than B. Because C is definitely less than B, my answer is not option B. My answer is option D. 7 is to 6 is to 5. Now, obviously, you can look at the number 7, 6, 5, again distribute the numbers that we have got from 4, 9, 5, 0 and again figure out what the answer is. You will get the answer for sure. But during the test, it does not make sense for you to calculate a lot of things. Simple observation, eliminate 3 options. The 2 options that remain, only look at which one is greater. If you see that C is greater than B, end of the story. You need not worry about anything at all. Similarly, A greater than B, no need to worry about anything else, simply mark D as the answer. It is perfectly logical. right? So, I hope you have understood how to solve this particular question. Now, if you have solved the first question or you have understood the solution to the first question, this should be a cakewalk. So, again, let us try to figure out what to do with this. I will not spend a lot of time on the explanation. It is exactly similar to the first one. Let us say initially, there were x liters or x gallons that were present in the cask. Now, what is happening is, you are removing 18 gallons of this mixture. So, the amount left is x minus 18, but what is the ratio of alcohol to water in this case or ratio of alcohol to the total solution? It is basically, you can say 4 by 5. Now, what is happening is this is removed and the cask is filled with water. So, what is happening is the amount of alcohol here is 4 by 9, you can say. right? And in this case, if you look at it, the amount that is filled, water that is filled is nothing but 0. Because you are filling it with water, which means that there is no alcohol in this particular thing that you are mixing in the first solution. right? At the end of it, the proportion of alcohol to water becomes 5 by 7. So, what is alcohol to total? It is 5 by 12. Now, you have got something 4 by 9 here and 5 by 12 here. You can simply multiply it by 3. So, all these things, if you multiply by 3, you will still get the same answer. Or, or if you make the denominator 36 for all of this, you will still get the same answer. So, in this case, 4 by 9. So, 4 out of 9. So, what out of 36? So, if you look at it, 4 by 9 is nothing but 16 out of 36. 0 by 36 or 0 by whatever is nothing but 0 by 36. And 5 out of 12 is 15 by 36. So, what do we get? Gap of 15, you get a gap of 1. So, the ratio of this to whatever has been replaced should be 15 is to 1. So, if 1 parts corresponds to 18, 15 parts corresponds to what? 15 into 18, which will be 18 into 15, which is 270. So, x minus 18 is 270, x will be 288. And so, that is going to be our answer. You can also again think of it a bit and you can again mark the answer very quickly within 5 or 10 seconds of reading this question. What do we do? We know that the cask is completely filled with water and alcohol. The concentration is 4 is to 5 or you can say 9 parts. So, whatever amount is present there, you can divide it into 9 parts. So, that number has to be divisible by 9. 
which option is divisible by 9 288 that's my answer end of the story right so even with a bit of common sense you will be able to solve this question even if you look at 5 is to 7 12 parts which option is divisible by 12 288 that is our answer now obviously none of these could have also been the answer but what are the chances that none of these is my answer so 288 is something that you can safely go for if you have very less time on hand if you have time on hand solve it no problem but if you do not have time on hand you can simply mark 288 as the answer because it is divisible by 9 because it is divisible by 12 whereas the rest of the options are not so i hope you understood what we have discussed in these questions and you are confident enough to attempt these kind of questions if you come across them at a later point in time i'll see you again in the next video till then happy learning